everybody. I am uh, at our local riding area and today we are going to be testing the new Seaforce 800 XC 2024. Just picked it up two days ago. It's 20 degrees out so I know we're going to freeze our tails off. My buddy Troy over here is going to be riding his 2021? Uh, yeah. 2021 800 XC and then we got John on his Yamaha Kodiak 700 so it's gonna be a cold ride we're gonna take our time though and uh, I'm gonna be doing a review as I ride on this machine um, but as you can see it is literally brand new yeah so stay tuned all right so one thing I do want to test is the speedometer a lot of people say the speedometer is inaccurate I uh, want to check that out. Hey man, it's 20 degrees out here and I got my Kemimoto heated gloves on. These things are freaking awesome. If you guys ride in the cold, I suggest checking them out. They're great. Here we go. off the bat I can definitely say that the suspension is way different than my 600 with the Alpha Shots. It's a little bumpy. My 600 really soaks up the, uh, the bumps with the Alpha Shots. But it's manageable. And she is snappy. Woo! Anything, it's you know, real heavy, not pushing. 
John just climbed this two wheel drive with the Grizzly. Tires, tires are working great. Traction's good. You know, we're going to try to avoid coming through a lot of puddles because it's freezing today. And I don't know if you, any of anybody that's ever ridden in the snow and in the cold, you go through water, then eventually your your calipers will freeze up. We have a long ride ahead of us. We're going to be riding down into town, grab some lunch, beer, and uh, we're going to be hitting some hills on the way down. So I want to make sure that you know we have brakes. So you keep that in mind when you're riding in the winter. Going through the water, that at some point your calipers will most likely freeze up, and you usually end up finding out at the worst moment when you go to like oh crap, like you're sneaking up on a buddy too fast, or you hit a hill, and uh, you come to find out that guess what, I don't have any brakes, so that's not a good position to be in. Now, I will say, my 600 touring from the factory has had a rattle. Um, it is a, uh, I thought it was the valve. Very annoying. Sounds like something's like almost tinny. Um, I didn't like it. I couldn't find out where it was, and uh, when we replaced the motor on my 600 after it got sunk, we found out that the um, we found out that the uh, coming off the head on the exhaust there is a I'm getting bounced around here pretty fierce. Coming off the exhaust of the, you know, from the head underneath the gas tank is a exhaust cover. Well, we found out that that thing rattled loose so bad that it was like not even tight. So that was rattling. We ended up replacing the motor, tightened that thing up, and found out that it came loose again. So I got a brand new motor in a C4 600. That unfortunately, uh, now we gotta dip down in there and try to figure out a different claim. Um, because I can't deal with it. I mean, it's not bad, but it can drag, it can give you a headache. So, but this is super, super quiet. This thing, you know, oh, no engine braking. Interesting. Did you guys catch that? No engine braking. Interesting. Ooh. Hit bottom. Now the other thing, my, my real complaint, my only real complaint about this ATV I don't know why CF Moto did this, but there is a low limit override or on the low gear. And I absolutely hate it. You have to squeeze in the uh, there's an override button on the front of the left hand of bar. I'm actually holding it. like 17 miles an hour it'll start cutting down Thank you. 
in this hill, four wheel drive. this four-wheeler is and, and again I'm not knocking the C4 600 I absolutely love my 600 I've had it for two years I still have it but I've owned it for two years and this thing is just wow and originally I was gonna buy this machine however I didn't because I was afraid it wouldn't fit on my trailer that I had at the time. I had a very small utility trailer that was only four foot wide by seven feet long. So I had no choice but to go with the C4600 and that thing barely fit on that trailer. So there was no way this was. I regret, and again, I'm not knocking the 600, but I regret not getting this from the start. This is so far an amazing machine with response, handling. Now this does have a little bit better suspension than the stock 600 does, but I know I, I noted earlier this suspension is no comparison to my Elka shocks, and I only have stage one Elkas on the uh, 600. This thing just really pulls out. It's really, really amazing how, how snappy it is. I'm very impressed. But the ride is definitely rough. Now, I was sitting on a 1000 Overland, and the Overland, just from sitting on it, felt softer than this. I don't know why, because I think they're the same chassis, and I think they have the same shocks. So I'm uncertain why this feels different. I'm assuming, well, let me, let me back up. I can say that my C4 600, after a year, the stock suspension did soften up quite a bit. Nothing like the Elkas, <clears throat> but it did soften up. So maybe in time, these will eventually soften up. Time will tell. And I do have to, uh, I mean, there is some spring adjustment I can let out, you know, but then, then again, I don't want to lose ride height. I gotta catch up to these guys. Wow, gee. This thing's got a lot of a lot of power, man. I'm telling you. I was afraid it wouldn't be enough. Now I know it is. going to be a blast at Hatfield and McCoy in April. I can't wait. But I will say it is a little bit bigger than the 600. It feels I'm up higher and it just feels a little bit like a tank. I don't know. Like it's heavier. I can really rip the 600. Uh, maybe I'm just being cautious with this. I don't know, but it feels like this is a little bit more 
heavier and top heavy, so to speak. But it is fun to drive. It really is. Having, having a V-twin is night and day over a single cylinder. But then again, I mean, I, I actually need to be careful when I say that. That my buddy Tom, he's running a uh, 660 Yamaha Grizzly. And that's a single cylinder big bore. And, and that thing's got a lot of power. So, I don't know. I mean, this, this is 200 cc's more than the 600. It's actually about 225 more. Um, and you feel it. It is night and day. Night and day. In delivery and uh, throttle response, everything. I honestly can't wait to put an RNG clutch kit on this. I am so looking forward to it. I have a feeling that that kit is really going to wake this up. Uh oh. This is a new trail that they opened. We're heading down into Minersville right now. And the old trail took forever. But I think this is just a minor shortcut. I don't think it's a full anything big. Wanna go first?
So there you have it, the 2024 Seaforce 800 XC. Unfortunately, I filmed the end of our ride. I pulled over and set the camera up and stood there for a good 10 minutes talking to it, the good and the bad, and turned out that I never hit record. So we were ready to go, the guys were ready to go, so we ended up loading up and heading back to the parking lot. I said, listen, I'll film the the end of the video as I drive home. So you have to excuse me. Um, we're leaving the place we were riding for this ride right now. So uh, so the Seaforce 800 XC. As many people who follow our channel know, I started the channel, well, technically I started the channel with a Yamaha 350 Warrior that was very short-lived. I ended up moving up to the uh, C4 600 Touring because I wanted a second seat in case my wife wanted to come with, and she has on many rides. Um, the 600 Touring was a, is, shouldn't say was, is a great machine. It is uh, an extremely capable machine. It's 580 cc, so it's not true 600. And I'm gonna be honest, when it comes to the C4 600 Touring, for riding two people, it is a two up, but for riding two people, if you get two full size adults on it, it will handle it, but you're gonna want more. You're definitely gonna feel when you put a passenger on that thing, the difference. Now the 600 Touring and the 600 C Forces are extremely capable machines. I have put 1300 miles on my 2022 600 and never had any issues now the machine got sunk i did have to replace the motor but that was self-inflicted that was my fault wasn't the machine's fault my c force has never been in the shop for any repairs has never been in the deal at the dealer for anything it has never let me down but again if it's self-inflicted that's my fault not the machines not the brand so going from the Seaforce 600 Touring to the Seaforce 800 XC, which is technically a Touring as well, is night and day, I'm gonna tell you. The power increase and torque going from the 600 to the 800 is holy crap, wow. Now in the beginning, this machine, and I think it kind of softened up as we rode it, <clears throat> The clutch is extremely jerky. It is so jerky. Reverse, forward, or high, low. Uh, you know, the gas is very touchy. And I found that as the ride progressed, either I got used to it or it kind of started to break in. Now, I'm not going to say it broke in in 40 miles because we put about, what, 40 miles today on our rides and uh if it did great i mean that's awesome but i doubt that that happened but i'm thinking i got used to it the suspension on the 800 xc is and i think it's because it's new i think it's gonna break in is somewhat stiff now from the dealer i adjusted the gas uh from slower to faster um, I adjusted it to slower, so maybe I need to go to faster. I got to look, but I got to do some research. I didn't touch the bottom knob, and there is room to adjust the springs, but if I adjust the springs, then I lose some ride height. So I definitely got to mess with the shots, but I definitely want to try to soften that ride up. The ride, you know, I'm, I am used to having Hester Elka shocks on my 600 Touring. I can fly across rocks like a trophy truck. I don't feel hardly anything. It's freaking awesome. But the 600 Touring shocks won't fit on the 800, so I'm gonna be out that money on the 600. I am one of my one of our guys is gonna buy those from me, so at least I'm not losing a ton of money on that. But would I love to throw a set of Hester's on this Hester Elkas? Yeah. Right now, I just can't throw that money out the door um, with buying this machine. So, but. Maybe down the road, John Hester, you want to throw me a deal? Wink, wink. Maybe down the road, we'll see. 
a com another complaint. The shocks aren't necessarily a complaint. It's just I noticed, right? I noticed that the ride was stiffer, and uh, it is what it is. So the other thing that I noticed going from the 600 Touring to the 800 XC is the 600 Touring seems to have a more comfortable seat. I know that may sound weird, but the 600 Touring, the seat seems longer than the 800 for the driver. And it also seems like it's a little bit thinner in width. The 800 XC feels like it's wider. And I, I, I have to measure them and confirm. I still have my 600, which I could do that. But the 600 definitely feels a little more comfortable and a little more nimble than the 800. The 800 sits up a lot taller than, than the 600 does. I noticed when I was riding my 600 and my buddy Troy who rides with us, he got the 800. When he would roll up next to us, he would be looking down at us a little bit. He'd be sitting up a little bit taller. Troy's maybe about an inch taller than I am, but um, I could definitely notice a difference. So, you, don't, you know, the ride... You know that you're on a big ATV. I knew going from the 600 to the 800, as soon as I got on the 800, I was like, wow, this is much, much beefier, more stout than the 600 is. And it honestly, it, it feels like you're riding a tank. It really does. Like you're, it's a big machine. Um, but that 800cc motor, it moves it and it moves it with me on it. I'm telling you what. If you watch the video, and I'm sure you did, there are some great ride footage. The stock tires on the C4 C800, oh my God, amazing. And even the stock tires on the 600 Tourings and the 600 models, they're actually really good too. Um, this machine, in a lot of deep snow, just dropped down and dug in and I got really good traction. There were times I had to engage four wheel drive, but she climbed well. I, there was one point we were on top of a mountain where there was almost 12 inches of snow. And John was on his 700 Kodiak and him and I are ripping through the trails. And it handles great. It really does. It handles great. I have no complaints there. Um, my only other complaint with the 800 compared to the 600 Touring. And I've never had this issue on my 600 Touring is I hit some mud puddles today, moving pretty good at a good clip, maybe about 20 miles an hour. And on my 600 Touring, my the inside of my floorboards, where my legs are, hardly gets wet, hardly gets wet. And I don't know if it's because there's plastic there that help block any splashes that come, splash that comes up. The 800 doesn't do it. And again, it's not a negative thing on the machine. It doesn't downgrade the machine in my mind in any way. I just think CF Moto could have done a better, a little bit better job kind of closing that all off. Uh, I hit two decent puddles today doing about 20 and completely soaked the bottom of my pant legs up to my knee. Now we're out riding. We expect to get wet. We expect to get muddy. But when you're going from the same brand and moving up a notch, you're kind of expecting everything you got in the lower notch and even more in the upper notch. And I did. I gained the motor. I gained the power. I gained the the torque, you know. And I would have expected to have the same type of enclosure as the 600 does. Now, the 800 and the 1000 are a completely different chassis than the 600. So maybe that's why that is. I don't know. But it's not a deal breaker for me because we're out here to get muddy. I'm not trying to sound like, oh, I got wet, I got muddy. That's not what I'm. why I'm doing this. I'm doing this to be honest for everybody that if you would ride a 600 and an 800 and go through the same slop, you're definitely going to see that one rider is a little bit cleaner than the other rider. Something to think about there. So... We rode 40 miles today, and I'm going to be honest with you, I had a grin on my face almost the entire time. I kid you not. This should have been the machine 
that I bought out of the gate when I bought my 600. But unfortunately, and again, if anybody went back and watched, you know, any of the reviews I did on the 600, I didn't get the 800. I originally went up to the dealer to buy the 800. But I only at the time, at the time, I only had a small utility trailer, which was like four feet by seven. It's like a tractor supply trailer, like a Lowe's trailer you would pick up. And it was four feet wide, exactly four feet wide inside and seven feet long. And I was worried the 800 wouldn't fit on it. So I ended up sitting on the 600, looking at the specs with the dealer. And I said, you know what? This is it. This will fit. And we ended up going with the 600. I don't regret it. But I really wish I would have stopped at that time. If I would have known the differences between the two machines, I would have stopped at that time and I would have sold the trailer, got a bigger one, and went with the 800. I was going to go with the 1,000. I was going to jump from the 600 to the 1,000. Everybody on the team wanted me to get the 1,000. I wanted to get the 1,000. My wife wanted me to get the 1,000 because she didn't want me to have to upgrade again. Ha ha. But I'm not. The reason why I didn't get the 1,000 and I didn't want to wait for the new models to come out because third gens, because I don't want to be, I don't want to buy, even though it's a third gen, a first product line, let them work bugs out, let them work the kinks out. I don't want to have to be that guy because I don't want my machine in the shop. I'm not saying it's going to be, but we all know how that goes sometimes. There's going to be bugs, there's going to be kinks. The 1,000 Overland in my mind, and again, please guys, whoever own them, I'm not knocking them. They are extremely powerful machines. But you have to literally strip a lot of the stuff off that comes with it for it to look like the average utility four-wheeler. I hate the boxes. I think the boxes are god-awful ugly. I do not like the bumpers. I think it looks like a safari machine. I really do. And it's not for me. I don't want a safari looking machine. It looks like you're ready to go run down brush and rip chainsaws out of those boxes. And I don't need that. So the 800 XC was the, cho the choice for me. And I believe I made the right choice. Eventually, eh, maybe the 1000, but it would be the new touring models once they work any bugs out after they come out. I'm not gonna be that guinea pig. So there you have it, everybody. My first ride of the 2024 CF Moto C Force 800 XC. I'm going to tell you, it was a pleasure. I love this machine so far. And I'm hoping that it treats me just as good as my 600 Touring did. We appreciate everyone's support, everybody who follows us on Facebook, everybody who subscribes to our, our stuff here on YouTube. Thank you very much. Please give us a like, drop us a comment down below. Are you looking into getting a C-Force or a CF Moto product? Do you have questions? Drop them in the comments below. Do your research. That's my biggest, my biggest thing. Do your research. Don't let other people beat you up. Don't let other people beat you up on the brand. I get it all the time and I got news for you. There are seven CF Motos that ride on our group or with our group and not one of them has ever had an issue with their machine that wasn't self-inflicted. Me, truly. I have 1,300 miles on my 600. I think a few of our guys are coming close to 1,000 miles, maybe pushed it. They have never had a single issue. The, the machines have never been in the shop. They have never been to the dealer, except for normal wear and tear maintenance. <clears throat> so let that tell you. I also want to give a shout out to Fanatical Side Rider, who is up in Canada. Roland, how are you? There, he has a video on his channel where he interviews a friend of his, and I don't know which C-Force ATV it is. I want to say it could be the 800, it could be the 600. That has 7,500 miles on it. And aside from maybe replacing a belt, I think he said, and brake pads, he has not had a single issue with that machine. I have had people tell me in comments, Oh, that thing's going to die in a thousand miles. You're not going to get a thousand miles out of that machine. And there's a guy who took care of his ride, maintained it, right? Which you should do with your cars, everything. Maintained it. And he right now still has, he has 7,500 miles on his machine and he still drives it. It runs like the day he probably bought it. So 
Thanks for watching, everybody. Like I said, please give us a like, give us a subscribe, drop us a comment. Have a great day.